When you're building an Azure Data Platform, things are always changing. Having a robust and consistent way to deploy new infrastructure, make changes to your pipeline, and tweak your configurations is crucial. And this is where Azure DevOps Pipeline can help everyone. Chris Ang here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you my nine video series on how to deploy Azure Data Platform from end to end with Azure DevOps Pipeline. And this tutorial is going to be using the YAML method instead of the classic UI drag and drop in Azure DevOps. The reason for that is because with YAML, it's more reusable and is quicker to apply. This is the video structure uh, for nine videos that I'm going to share with you. First video, which I'm going to cover today, is about introduction and prerequisites. We'll go all over the Azure portal and Azure DevOps just to make sure you all are prepared and have in place uh, to for the next videos. Second one is DevOps service connection uh, setup. Third video is about using ARM template to deploy a resource group and a storage account where we will store the Terraform state files later. Four and five is about Terraform deployments of the, all the Azure Data Platform resources. Six, seven, and eight is about all the incremental changes to Data Factory, Databricks, Data Lake, and also SQL Database. And lastly, which is optional, if you want to use self-hosted agent in DevOps pipeline, this is also the video for it, part nine. To illustrate what we're gonna do, this is an overview of what we're gonna deploy, essentially. And like I said, we're gonna use the DevOps pipeline YAML style, uh, instead of the classic UI for reusability and speed. Here in this diagram, you see there's Azure DevOps and this logo here is the pipeline. We will initially deploy the uh, storage account and a resource group using ARM template. This is where we're going to store the Terraform state file so that Terraform remembers uh, where the last deployment was and also to uh, keep track of what's been deployed with Terraform. And the next two environments here are identical. Uh, there, is, there are dev and test environment. Both will be deployed with Terraform and they're all going to consist of Data Factory, Data Lake, SQL DB, Databricks and Key Vault and to later uh, deploy incremental changes to, let's say, data factory pipelines, any files within data lake, any tables within SQL database, and any notebooks in Databricks uh, to show, then we'll use the test environment to prove that. To follow along this tutorial, you need to have these nine prerequisite items. The first two is about Azure portal subscription and Active Directory admin rights. If I switch quickly to my Azure portal here, I have my subscription, uh, which is VSE, where I have full access as an owner and user admin, uh, access admin right. And I have also an admin rights within my Azure Active Directory uh, as a tenant as a whole global admin. So I can basically do whatever I want. You don't have to have this uh, in, in, in reality, but if you don't, you need to have find somebody who can help you later, let's say when you create service principle, because you need to have access to the Azure ADA uh, directory as an admin. And thirdly, you need to have Azure DevOps org and project. This is shown uh, within your Azure DevOps uh, website. I have my DevOps organization called Resign, and I have a project called Project Egg here. Now for the Fourth one, you'd like to have these DevOps extensions installed. And I have suggested at least you have to have these two. I think if you go to your Azure DevOps and organization, if you go to this bottom left organization setting, you can find it in here, extension. And I have those two already installed in here. If you don't have it, please do uh, install it. You can click Browse Marketplace in here. It takes you to the marketplace and just search for those two extensions. Provided that you are 
if you have admin rights within the DevOps organization, you should be able to request and install it. So if I just find something like Terraform in here, just go in and find that. This is what you want. You can just click get it free. Okay. Now the next one you'd like to have is your license to use the Azure DevOps pipeline. Uh, I happen to have the Visual Studio Enterprise already. Uh, you need to have ideally at least basic plan. Uh, and you can find a bit more details about it in the uh, Azure DevOps uh, pricing uh, website to get you an idea. Uh, we need to have access to this Azure pipeline essentially. Um, okay. Uh, next to that is uh, we will need to use some sort of compute to run our DevOps pipeline. Uh, assuming that you are using the Microsoft hosted agent or Microsoft hosted uh, compute uh, provided by Microsoft, you do need to submit this Azure DevOps parallelism request form, which takes about two, three business days. Um, this is the form and what it looks like. Just fill in the details all in your email address, the name and your DevOps organization detail and whether your project is private or public. Uh, I happen to use private, so I just click private before I submit. Again, it takes about two and three working days. Okay, now back to this prerequisites. I think the last couple of things is this is seven is optional. If you are looking to create your own DevOps agent, uh, I will cover the, this in, the de in detail in part nine in the last video. And you'd like to have a basic understanding of Azure DevOps repo, which is the source control uh, using Git, essentially. And lastly, uh, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code for the code management throughout this video. That's it for the introduction and prerequisites video on how to deploy Azure Data Platform with DevOps Pipeline. Now we come to the part two on how to set up DevOps service connection. Like and subscribe if you do so far, and otherwise I'll see you in the next video.